um, mentally uh, because we're not probably going to have them for at least a couple of days, some, and um, maybe get them back on Wednesday, hopefully. Uh, but that it is a big concern, and, and um, <clears throat> most of our injuries are offensively, which um, – the ones that we're most concerned about uh, are offensively and, and uh, you know, the, the big physical D lines, uh, I think, have taken a toll on, on our tight end position, um, especially that's the one that I'm right now most concerned about. Um, but, yeah, I think it gives an advantage. You know, we, we, we're, we're undefeated on coming off our bye game, you know, our bye weeks. Um, and a lot of that is because we get our players back. Uh, I remember last time we played Tennessee here, they were coming off a of bye week, um, and they started out like gangbusters on us, and then we were able to come back in the second half. But this is a very, very – this is a totally different team than what came in here five, now going on five years ago. Um, but, yeah, that's a big concern. Uh, we're going to try to take a little bit off of them today. Uh, not the mental part of it, not the speed part of it as far as how fast Tennessee goes. But we, we've got to – for us to uh, compete like we need to and, and uh, how we want to, we're going to have to uh, be smart this week. Have you gone back – obviously you've gone back and looked at the video of, of Texas A&M and um, very talented team up front. Yeah. But also some missed assignments, some issues. Have you identified what some of the main problems were? Like particularly we were watching the video of like – um, you know, the fumble at the 10-yard line, like what happened exactly on that play and, and on some others? Well, there's either – there's let's, let's go with the fumble first. Uh, there's two ways you can play it. You can charge it or you can, you can stand on the line of sc scrimmage and read the mesh. And, and uh, they had a uh, – two different ways to play it. Uh, I think uh, – you know, we we should have just gave the ball, and they had us on that particular one. Part of it was a a little bit of a snap problem too, so it slowed down the timing of it. But uh, we probably should have just gave the ball and and took our lumps on that one, um, uh, because I believe they were mess charging Taylor, you know, and and uh, and fumbled football, and obviously bad timing, bad place, all of it's that, you know, if we'll just hold on to football, we'd be a really good football team with all the problems that we've got to correct. Um, the second one, I think we've we've had so many pressures that um, we've got a lot of problems. We've got a confidence problem. Um, we have a, uh, a quarterback that's not confident. Uh, there's times when he can stand in the pocket that he, there is one there. There's there's times when he stays in the pocket and he gets hit, um, you know. So uh, probably in between, uh, and we we tried a lot of, of quick passing game as well. Um, but I think between that moving the pocket and running the football, you know, the the problem with that was early in the game. You know, um, we lost a running back. Early in the game, 22 was in and out of the game. Uh, R-Dub was suspended, which he's not anymore, by the way, but he was suspended. So it, it takes takes a little bit of, of, you know, our tight ends. <clears throat> Both of them didn't practice a whole lot last week. So uh, it takes a little bit of the running thought out of it. But I think to take pressure off of the offensive line and our quarterback, <clears throat> we have to uh, run the ball a little bit more, quick game, uh, get the ball out of his hands so we can build some trust between him and the, the offensive line. And and uh, he, he's got to get better. The offensive line's got to get better. Um, I think Tesla was a big uh, shot in the arm for us. I think he came in and made some plays, and that gives – I believe that gives Taylor another option to go to. Um, so – there's a lot of reasons behind that. Um, if I was going to put it in a nutshell, I'd say we got to protect the front of the pocket better. Um, I didn't think our tackles play. I thought they played better than they played the week before. 
but there's no place for him. A lot of times there's no place for him to step up, and so the pocket's getting collapsed on him, which makes you look worse at tackle. Even the last one, you know, that we we fumbled the football on, I mean, uh, Carmona had him 11 yards deep. You can't ask a guy to do more than that. He flushed because the front of the pocket was coming at him, and uh, the guy got the strip uh, fumble. But but uh, I thought our tackles were better. Uh, we've got to continue to get better. But I think the front of the pocket is something that we've, we're certainly going to address this week as well. Different type of issues between the offensive line this year and last year, but is there anything you can take from what well, la- You're going to have to explain what you're talking about. Well, just, you know, last year you had trouble in the ground game. And this year, you know, it's more pass protection. Just Is there anything you can take and maybe apply from last year and go about correcting for this year? Well, we're trying. You know, we're trying to fix it. And, and uh, uh, we don't – I don't believe personnel change right now is going to help us. Um, uh, I think the only way that we can get better is maybe take a load of – a little bit of the pressure off, like I said, and and run the ball a little bit more, um, and hopefully stay out of those third down situations and and uh, move the ball a little bit more uh, on the ground. Uh, this kind of funnels into what you've just been talking about, but beating blitz pressure, um, getting the ball out faster, does that come into play? I mean, what what are the principles that you have to use to beat? When they're sending more than you can block. Yeah, you know, we 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 went to a lot of crossing routes. You know, we we did. Uh, I think our screen game. You know, in the second uh, half, we we threw a screen out there. Um, um, when people are zeroing you, which we've had, um, which means that you have to be good with six, and then seventh one, the quarterback's got to have. Um, you have to get the ball out of your hands, and that means either quick slants, um, uh, rolling the pocket, rolling away from the seventh guy, rolling away from the sixth guy if you're empty, um, uh, and the screen game, or maybe you try to bust a draw through there, something because there's nobody in the middle of the field, so you're trying to get your receivers to the middle field and get the ball out of your hand as fast as you can. Um, the wide receivers have to understand that as well. Uh, they have to understand that, hey, look, there's nobody in the middle of the field. They're, they're running total. Uh, we have to get to the middle of the field. And so all that stuff has to get better for us. But to answer your question, yes. You mentioned that the tight ends are maybe the biggest concern. What about the DBs uh, with Clark? So he dressed out the other night. And Braxton, yeah. what's their availability? Well, I don't feel great about Braxton. Um, but I, I feel pretty good about Clark. You know, he practiced last week. Uh, he was more of a – I believe he could have played if we really needed him to. You know, Stewart went down. Uh, he was sick. Uh, but uh, I didn't I didn't feel real confident with Clark. Not, not that he couldn't play. I didn't feel confident. I thought he was doing it more for the team than – what his body physically could handle, and so we elected not to, not to play him at that point. But, but I, I think we just got to get his confidence that he can hit somebody, and I think he's closer, obviously a lot closer than he was last week. Coach, did you notice something change in the defense there in the last maybe two or three drives by a m because they'd been so stout for you for two, three quarters there, and then – it seemed like suddenly they couldn't get that stop you needed no, at the end. Not, I mean, not really. I mean, the, they they threw a 12 yard. Uh, we got them down to the six inch line. They threw a 12 yard out or roll pass out. The next play we broke and um, they got a uh, 35 yard run on us. The problem is at the end of the run we just got to knock him out of bounds. We we give the 15 yard. So it's a 50 yard play. Well, that changed – what we were trying to do was change field position. Well, they just did too. It came at the most inopportune time. We got stuck a little bit on personnel, um, on a drive, and then probably the the most disappointing thing was we had an opportunity to get the ball back, and they ran right up the middle for eight, and then they converted a first down, and, and we didn't have it. Uh, really, we didn't have a chance to 
to get the we probably had a chance to get the ball with 45 50 seconds left there at the end and we didn't so um we played a a, a good game um but we allowed the the same thing that hurt us a little bit against auburn uh big plays uh we've got to eliminate those for us right now uh for us to win and they played an excellent game but that we've got to be a little bit better on those big plays Taylor has been so good, you know, either running, whether it's by design or escaping the pocket. What did Texas A&M do maybe to, to limit his ground game uh, last week? Oh, they just, you know, they, they, they were messing with him. You know, they were, they were um, running at him, running at the mesh, and they were sitting there and reading the mesh, you know, first play of the game. Um, and then the same play comes along, and he gets around that later in the game. Um, the looks, I, th I think, were a little bit difficult for him. Um, but he got a lot on his plate. I think he'll be fine. I know he'll be fine. But that's what they were doing. They were, they were uh, continuing to mix up the looks for him. And uh, I think and the, the other thing is, our snap, when we're going to the left, snapping, we're snapping it to the right. And I think that has a lot to do with our timing of our run game. And uh, when he's reaching back here and reading over here, I believe it becomes difficult. And we've got to help him get the snap down the middle where it's supposed to be so he can have a little bit more time to make those decisions. Braylon had nine carries. I know Jaquindon missed some time, but, yeah. you know, is he a guy that maybe is going to get some more action here? And what has he done to kind of build up that trust where you're, you're comfortable playing him? Yeah, we've been comfortable playing him. It's just, you know, we had those other backs early that we felt like could make yards for us. And uh, so we've always had trust in him, and, and he'll continue to get more and more uh, reps as the season goes. I think he's a really good back. He runs extremely hard. So – most of him not playing early was his uh, ability to identify and pass pro, and uh, he's gotten a lot better with that too. You know, Sam, I don't doubt it's going to be a great atmosphere Saturday night, but Tennessee, they went to Norman and really took care of business there. They went to Charlotte, you know, neutral site, and really, you know, hammered yeah. NC State. How impressive is what they've done on the road in these night games, and what, what do you think has been the key to their success in those games away from home? Well, that was a hard-fought game at, at Norman, you know. Um, OU scored late, I think, to make it look a little bit um, better than what the game was. I think if you look at that game, they got up and coach tried to run the football, you know, trying to uh, take the clock away. Um, but I, I think it says that they've been in that atmosphere before and, and they've got a really good team. Uh, physical. What you see this year a little bit, Bob, is their their defense is so much better than what I I've seen. You know, they're they're really good defensively, and uh, but I think they handled it real well. Oklahoma is really really loud at night, you know, and and uh, they handled it real well. I imagine they had more than half of the fans when they went over and played in the neutral site, NC State, but. Um, Says they got a good program. I understand mature guys. They got some a lot of older guys on a, on their offensive line. Usually that's where it affects you more than anything. It's on up front on the O line. They got a lot of maturity up there, starting with Cooper. And Nico, I'm not even trying to say his last name. Their quarterback, uh, Imai Paliai. I think or, it's Imala Leala. Yeah, that's you're better at than I. What, what, what's your take on him as a young guy? He's putting up great. Really numbers. good. Really good. Mature. You know, he's – he's. it's just like uh, Marcel Reed, you know, Reed did what he needed to do. He didn't turn the football over. Uh, he, I'm not comparing them. I'm saying Nico is that. He he does what he needs to do. He, he's got a lot of opportunities to shine in his offense. He doesn't make mistakes. And then he does it at a high, 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 high level. He's scary because he's not going to make mistakes and he's going to run the offense to a – perfection and and uh for a young guy like that he's just uh, really impressive 
Sam, you mentioned R-Dub no longer being suspended. How much of a factor in the run game could he be? Because I know he was behind some guys you know, earlier in the season as well. Does he still have to yeah. climb up the depth chart? Yeah, we, we know that he's a good player, you know, from from a year ago. He's, uh, he's been hurt most of this year. Um, he's healthy now. Uh, all he's got to do is uh, have a good week of practice, and we'll, we'll – uh, Certainly, you know one thing. You you have a suspension. You have this. You know you do you you do whatever the responsibility is, and then after that, it's you know you we wouldn't let guys back on the team or anything if we had a grudge or we had anything like that. It's what we felt like we need to do, and and uh, so if he's ready to go and he's practicing well, we're going to use him. You mentioned the tight end health. I guess has still dealing with the back, and you know, I think Washington may have gotten dinged up. Yeah, he did. Is there a chance with Poshka this week? Man, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I'll know more. Very doubtful right now, but we'll know more Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, but very doubtful doubtful right now. And how much – I mean, everyone focuses on the offensive line, but how much do the tight ends impact the run game? Like not having the, those guys healthy and at full strength, how much does that impact Saturday? Well, they have – you know, they're one of the – uh, a point of contact blockers, and so when they play well, we we do pretty good. And when they don't, you know, they're they're as important as the center, you know, because you're they're either cutting the edge back offside or they're leading the way, and uh, so <clears throat> very very important. And and they've gotten better and doing a good job. It's just uh, certainly when you don't practice, it takes a toll on some of the looks that uh, you're seeing, some you don't because you weren't out there. You can just watch it, but you can't do it, and there's a big difference between the two. Is it fair to ask Green to make the right decision when he's under duress over and over and over again like that? I mean, is that a, a reasonable expectation? Yeah, I think so. I mean, um, it's not fair to ask him to be perfect, but um, – I think so, and he's working at it. I think he'll get a lot better with it. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot out there on his plate, and, and but I, yeah, I think if you ask him the same question, he'd say yes, you know. Um, so uh, he's certainly working at it. Bobby's working with him on it. I, I, I'm not really concerned about him getting better at it. I think he'll get better at it and have a good week. Uh, you guys talk about starters, not standards and stuff, but usually a starter is going to play more. Is it – and you talked about Tesla a little bit. Is it time to put him back in, in the starting lineup like he was last year? Um, I think I think we'll, I think the whole thing about that would be uh, we've got to use him uh, more. And so whether he runs out there as a starter or not, I, I, mean, I think he's earned the right to – uh, get to get out on the field and throw the ball to him. Um, so uh, whether he starts or not, I, I think we'll have to wait and see at the end of the week. But he certainly has earned that right uh, if he has good week of practice. Um, Two-fold question. You've coached at Tennessee, so you kind of know the history and everything. And when they're good, they they can be very good. And then Josh Heupel, uh, run, uh, the Times you cross paths with him, what you know of him? Really good dude. I really like him. Um, the guy won the Heisman, and I don't know what I was expecting. I don't know. But he's a very humble, very good guy. I mean, uh, I like him. I like what he does uh, on his team. Uh, they're well coached. They're disciplined. They're, they play extremely hard. But I really like the man, and uh, I don't know him much more than the SEC head coaches' meetings, but I have high respect. I, I mean this. I have high respect for the guy because he's really done a great job there, and, and a lot of guys had went in there and didn't before he, he got there, and and uh, I think he's done a wonderful job, and kids are – they know how to play the game. They know how to play it the right way. And then on Tennessee, just the historic nature. Of how yeah, I remember when I went for an interview and the GA took me over to the stadium and I'd never been there before. And I, 
in between the time I was interviewing and I think the head coach was talking to AD about if he could hire me, how much he's going to pay me and all that. And I went and walked in the stadium and I said, I told the GA, I said, take me, take me back. And he said, why? And I said, hell, they ain't going to hire me to coach in the stadium like this. It was unbelievable. It was like the Coliseum, you know. I said, I'm, I'm not getting a job. Take me back. And he started laughing. And when I got back, I had a contract and, and a job. But uh, it's one of those places, you know, it's an SEC school, but it's one of those places that has – a lot of history and uh, really uh, great place to live. Uh, good, op- good opportunity at the time to, to uh, obviously get an SEC as well for me. And then you went back in 15. And, I mean, you guys actually won three in a row in the series. Yeah. Uh, just maybe – I don't know if that has any, any bearing on this, but you don't play them that often. You know, um, when we went down there a few years back, uh, they returned open. They they returned open to kick off for a touchdown. We were down. We were down fast down there, and then offensive line and running backs, and they kind of took the game over back then. We run a lot of pin and pulls, and and uh, end up kicking a field goal right before half, and we missed the swiper. I'll never forget that. He came right through there, and he should have blocked it, and he didn't. And uh, and then. Uh, when I got the job here, I, one of my former old linemen over at Tennessee, you know, I was talking about when I was an old line coach, he, I said, hey, I'm going to Arkansas. I think I came from Arkansas here, didn't or from Tennessee here, right? Yeah. And I said, hey, I'm going to Arkansas. Hey, there ain't nothing to do. I mean, I'll never forget. He said, there's nothing to do in, in Arkansas. We played there. I said, yeah, it was 44 to 10, bro. I said, there might not have been much to do, but them hogs are whipping your butt, you know, and we were laughing about it. But I do remember those stories. Tennessee was a short time for me. I think it's about maybe 11 months or something. But I'm awful happy Derek Dooley hired me and gave me that opportunity. Their quarterback, Nico, but the running back, Dylan Sampson, he's, he's been – bad. He's bad to the bone. He's a good player. I mean, he's really good. Um can make you miss, can run over you. I mean, he's a good player, can catch. Um, I like him a lot. He, he's a really good, really good player. And then the, you know they use the other one, Bishop too. And but he's he's really good. He's a really good player. And then with Addison Nichols, you talked about you know being able to snap the ball better. Is that something like how do you how do you fix that in practice? Well, you just have to practice it a lot. And his main problem is when he's going left. And the ball's kicking right on him, and so you just have to. But you can't. I mean, a rep's not a rep if it's not full speed. So you can't be down there in pre-practice. He's got to go full speed to his left, full speed reaching to the left, full speed back blocking to the left. And that ball's kicking to the right on him, and uh, so we, you know, we've obviously been working on it. Uh, and it doesn't happen every time, but when it does, he's going to his left, and we've got to get that fixed. You mentioned Nassie. He's obviously a former Tennessee player, so is Danico. Uh, what would you say about each one of those guys separately, about what kind of season they've had for you so far and what kind of kids they, they are for your team? Well, anytime, you know, and Trey had mentioned something about starting and all this, and so I'm going to contradict myself a little bit. But anytime you've got a guy that's starting, he's he's the best you got. You know, that's that, that is your best. You feel like that's the best you have. Um Especially if you're not in a rotation, you know, you know what I mean. So, uh, with Nichols coming in here and and starting for us, uh, has has been uh, really good for us. Um, and then with Nico, he's played really really good ball for us. And and so, those two guys coming from Tennessee have have helped our helped our program. I'm glad they're here. Do you think there's a little extra? Uh, juice, whatever you want to use it for them playing their old team. You know, I think there's there's something to some of that. Uh, I also think that lasts about four or five plays, and then you know you get hit in the head, and you get somebody cuts you, somebody knocks hell out of you, and then it, at that point it's about preparation and what what you're made of in the heart and how far, hard you want to go. So I do think there's something. I think that has to do with preparation. I think whenever you you 
you're you're wanting to do something so bad. I, I don't know that that feeling that you have right before the game is going to help you play a lot better, but I do know that feeling helps you prepare, which then you'll play better. So I, I, I would assume they'd have that uh, this week. I think I got this stat right out of Tennessee's notes. They've outscored their opponents 78-3 to three yeah, in that's the first pretty good. quarter. Yeah. What have you seen and just, I guess – yeah, obviously you want to get off to a good start against these guys before they could bury you, you know? Yeah, well, I appreciate the confidence, but um, – You know what I mean, anybody. Oh, I'm talking about okay. if you're playing them, you, want, you know, that, that could be the Green Bay Packers. Or, you know? I got you. <laughs> Old guys use the Green Bay Packers. I talk about them all the time, too, you know. They're, I don't think they're as good as they used to be, Bob, but – I'm not calling you old. I'll, I'll just take the 14-year-old champion. But um, I don't know what your question was now. What was it? Well, just the fact they've, they've, they've outscored opponents for 78-3, yeah, how concerned Well, the thing about them in now is you, you've, if, if they get going on you now, it's they're, they're hard to stop, you know. They're hard to stop because they go so fast. And then, uh, you know, your corrections – can't sub, you know, so your corrections are made on the sidelines, you know. So, uh, obviously, they were well – to start like that, they're well prepared on both sides of the ball. We have to match that uh, to have success on Saturday, which we plan on having. Is there a sense of relief at all, Coach? You've made it through the first five weeks of the season, five different stadiums in five games. Um, just that you get to be home now for the better part of the rest of the year. How does that feel? Um, I'm, I, I want to play a night game in our stadium, you know. Uh, so uh, excited about that, excited about Tennessee coming. I mean, the fans should be excited about it, you know, the top four team in the country. And and uh, the thing with the road is, you know, you you get on the bus, you go to XNA, you get on, go through the deal, you get on the plane, you fly out, you get on a bus, you go to the hotel, you get on a bus after the game, you you might bus an hour to get to the plane, then you wait, then you get on the plane, then you wait, and then they close it, and then you fly in, then you get to X and A, and then you wait, and they put the bags on, and then you come home. Well, when you do it four out of five times, and now we didn't because we bust, which then you go, okay, then we come back three hours. It gets old. And everybody has home games and everybody has away games. It's just when we were on the bus count or on the plank coming back, I was going, man, I'll be gl- glad to, you know, not do this the, you know, for the sixth, you know, time out of f- or fifth time out of six weeks. I don't, I'm not saying it lost as a game, didn't, you know, I'm not saying all that. It's just going to be much better to do the hog walk, come in here and get out there where they got to worry about noise for once, you know, in a while, and we don't. And I think that'll be really uh, – I think it will help us. I don't know if maybe Tennessee was holding back a little bit, but Oklahoma is really the only team that's kind of slowed them down a little bit. Is there anything that you can take from the film or yes. what Oklahoma did good against their offense that you guys could do? Yeah, there sure is. I thought it was a brilliant uh, game plan. Um but as I say, once Tennessee got ahead there, they, they went primarily to running. The, you know, they were ahead. They felt like their defense was playing well. I think Oklahoma was, was struggling a little bit offensively. And part of that, a lot of that was because Tennessee was, uh, is really good on defense. But, yes, there's, there's certainly things and, and, uh, uh, that we looked at that uh, Coach Venables and his staff did there that uh, are intriguing. Just, I know we've talked about him a bunch, but Andrew Armstrong has been such like a reliable target for Taylor. And you know, I, there was some time in the off season. I think we all wondered would he would he come back, and he did. Mm-hmm. I mean, how have you seen him develop? You know, not only for this season for you guys, but for his future, yeah. you know, aspiring NFL you know career. But he's certainly on the NFL list now, and guys come in, they want to talk about him. Um, uh, so. If you want something bad enough, you got to go work to get it, and I, th- I think that's what he's done. Uh, he's also matured as a young man, and I'm not saying he was immature. I don't mean that, but he's also grown as a as a young man, and and uh, uh, I think if you ask him, he'd say he practices harder, he works harder, you know, and 
and part of that's for the team. I'm sure part of that, which is not selfish, I'm sure part of that is for his future in the NFL. You can do both, and uh, so I'm really proud of him for that. When you recruited him two years ago, did you envision this type of development where he could become an, an NFL receiver? You know, I didn't know if he he could make a Division two film look that same way in the SEC. And, uh, you know, there was a learning curve and all that, but he, he's always been very talented. Uh, so I envisioned him being a really good SEC receiver, uh, one of the better ones. Uh, I don't know, but I, I envisioned him that that he would be one of the you know, a, a really good SEC receiver, and now he's one of the one of the better ones out there. So, really happy for him.